In our discussion today, we'll explore a profound narrative, one that might seem like it belongs only in the pages of ancient scriptures or mythological texts, yet holds deep spiritual significance and transformative potential for us today. We're going to unpack the story of when demons asked God for forgiveness and the shocking answer they received. This tale isn't just about celestial beings, it's about rebellion, redemption, and the nature of forgiveness. The Essence of the Story Imagine a scenario where beings, created from smokeless fire, endowed with free will, choose a path of defiance against the divine plan. Their rebellion stems from pride, from a sense of being superior to others created from lesser materials like clay. Over time, however, the weight of their choices, the isolation from divine grace, and the realization of their continued suffering lead them to seek forgiveness. They approach the divine, hearts burdened with regret, and ask for pardon. What would you expect the response to be? A straightforward forgiveness, an eternal punishment, or perhaps something entirely unexpected? The answer they receive is both a lesson in divine justice and mercy, and it's this response that we will delve into, seeking its implications for our own spiritual journeys. The Nature of Divine Forgiveness The response from the divine is not merely an act of pardoning, but a profound declaration about the nature of forgiveness itself. Forgiveness is always available, the divine declares, but it requires a true change of heart, a return to the path of righteousness. This answer shifts the focus from the act of forgiveness to the transformation that must accompany it. What does this mean for us? It suggests that forgiveness is not just about being absolved from our wrongdoings. It's about genuinely transforming our attitudes and behaviors. It's about realignment with a higher moral and spiritual order. Have you ever considered forgiveness not just as a release from guilt, but as an invitation to transform yourself? Click subscribe to this channel to get more profound spiritual lesson. The Demon's Dilemma The demons upon hearing this face a dilemma. Transformation requires humility, a quality that their initial rebellion had cast aside. To truly seek forgiveness, they must not only express regret, but demonstrate a willingness to abandon their prideful ways and submit to the divine will. This is no small feat. It asks for a complete overhaul of their essence, a deep internal change that goes beyond surface level repentance. How often do we, like the demons, struggle with truly letting go of our egos? How often do we seek forgiveness, whether from God, others, or ourselves, while still clinging to the very attitudes or behaviors that caused harm in the first place? The Path to Redemption The path to redemption, as laid out by the divine, involves several key steps for the demons, and by extension, for us. First, there must be acknowledgement of wrongdoing, not just externally, but in the depths of one's soul. This acknowledgement must be coupled with genuine remorse, a heartfelt sorrow not just for the consequences, but for the act itself, Following this, there must be a commitment to change. This isn't a temporary adjustment, but a steadfast dedication to walking a new path, one aligned with divine virtues such as compassion, humility, and love. And finally, there must be a continuous effort to maintain this new path, to prevent backsliding into old, destructive patterns. As you reflect on these steps, Consider your own life. When you seek forgiveness, do you stop at feeling sorry, or do you take concrete steps to ensure you do not repeat the same mistakes? How do you ensure that your path to redemption is not just a moment of emotional regret, but a sustained journey of spiritual growth? 
the Divine's promise. The Divine's response also contains a promise, a reassurance that no one is beyond redemption, no matter how grave the sins, as long as there's a true transformation of heart. This is a powerful message of hope. It tells us that forgiveness and redemption are eternally available, waiting for us to make that pivotal shift towards genuine change. As we conclude this first part of our exploration, reflect on the nature of true forgiveness and the transformative journey it entails. How do you relate to the idea that seeking forgiveness is not just about asking to be let off the hook, but about fundamentally transforming who you are? If you're ready, we will continue to explore deeper into the implications of this divine dialogue and how it can influence our understanding of forgiveness, transformation, and redemption in our own lives. Shall we proceed? As we proceed further into our exploration, let's delve deeper into the profound implications of the divine dialogue between God and the demons, focusing on the transformative power of genuine remorse and change. This narrative is not merely a mythological tale, it mirrors the very real spiritual processes we undergo in our quest for redemption and enlightenment, understanding genuine remorse. At the core of the demon's request for forgiveness is the concept of remorse. But this isn't simply a superficial feeling of regret over consequences or fear of punishment. It's a deep, soulful recognition of the moral and spiritual deviation their actions represent. Genuine remorse involves a profound internal reckoning where one confronts the darkest parts of oneself, acknowledges the wrongs without self-deception, and feels the weight of the impact those actions have had on others and on one's own spiritual state. Consider for a moment the depth of such remorse. Have you ever experienced a moment where you've looked inward and recognized a part of yourself that was out of alignment with your higher ideals? How did you address this acknowledgement? Did it change you? The Call for Transformation The Divine's response to the demons underscores that forgiveness is inseparable from transformation. It is not enough to feel remorse. There must be a tangible change in how one lives and interacts with the world. This transformation is about aligning one's actions, thoughts, and desires with higher spiritual principles. It requires an ongoing effort to cultivate virtues like humility, compassion, and integrity, and to eradicate vices like pride, greed, and malice. This path of transformation can be incredibly challenging because it demands continuous self-awareness and self-regulation. It asks that you not only stop doing what is wrong, but also start actively doing what is right. It involves cultivating a new nature within yourself that naturally chooses the good over the bad, the kind over the cruel. What steps are you taking in your own life to ensure that your remorse leads to real change? How do you foster the virtues that align you with your highest self? The Role of Divine Grace In our narrative, the Divine does not simply leave the demons to their own devices after pointing them towards transformation. There is also an implication of grace, a divine assistance that supports the repentant being in their journey of change. Grace can be seen as the spiritual strength or energy that aids us in overcoming our lower impulses and elevating our souls towards higher states of being. This concept of divine grace brings us to a crucial point. While our efforts are necessary for transformation, they are often not sufficient on their own. We need a higher power, a force of good that supports and fills our endeavors with spiritual potency. Do you recognize moments in your life when you felt supported by a force greater than yourself? How did that change your perception of your spiritual journey? Continuous effort and perseverance. 
The journey of transformation is not a linear path nor a quick fix. It is a lifelong endeavor. The demons, like us, are asked not just for a moment of change, but for a steadfast dedication to the path of righteousness. This requires not just a temporary enthusiasm, but a persistent, enduring effort to grow spiritually. Perseverance in the face of setbacks is crucial. We all falter. We all sometimes revert to less than ideal patterns. The key is how we respond to these lapses. Do we give up or do we learn, rise, and continue to push forward? As we reflect on these themes, consider your own path. What challenges have you faced in maintaining your commitment to spiritual growth? How have you overcome these challenges and what have you learned from them? This exploration of remorse, transformation, divine grace, and perseverance helps us understand the profound depth of the narrative we are discussing. It's not just about whether forgiveness is granted, it's about the process that makes forgiveness meaningful. As we prepare to move into the next part of our discussion, let's continue to reflect on these themes and how they manifest in our lives, preparing to explore further the practical applications of these spiritual principles. As we delve deeper into our exploration of forgiveness and transformation, it becomes essential to understand the practical applications of these spiritual principles in our daily lives. This part of our discourse will focus on how we can actively embody the lessons learned from the divine response given to the demons, applying them to our own journeys of personal growth and spiritual evolution, living the principles of transformation. The story we are discussing teaches us that true transformation requires more than just a momentary feeling of remorse. It demands a sustained and active effort to change one's life in accordance with higher spiritual principles. This involves a daily commitment to living out the virtues that align with a higher path, virtues such as integrity, compassion, humility, and patience. Consider your daily interactions and decisions. How often do you pause to reflect on whether your actions align with these virtues? It might be helpful to start each day with a clear intention to embody one specific virtue throughout that day. For instance, you might choose to focus on compassion, actively looking for opportunities to understand and alleviate the suffering of others, whether they are close family members, colleagues, or strangers. The Importance of Community One of the most significant aids in our journey of spiritual transformation is the community. Just as the demons would rely on each other's support and encouragement in their quest for forgiveness and change, we too can benefit greatly from surrounding ourselves with a community of like-minded individuals who share our values and spiritual goals. This community doesn't necessarily need to be large. Even a small group of dedicated individuals can provide sufficient support, accountability, and inspiration. The key is the quality of interactions and the shared commitment to growth. How actively do you seek out and cultivate such relationships? Are there groups, clubs, or online communities where you could engage more deeply to support your spiritual journey? Continuous learning and humility. Another key aspect highlighted in the divine response to the demons is the necessity of humility in recognizing our faults and the continuous need for learning and growth. This humility allows us to be open to new teachings, to accept guidance from others, and to remain teachable regardless of our level of spiritual or worldly attainment. Continuous learning can take many forms, studying spiritual texts, engaging with spiritual teachers, attending workshops, or even learning from the natural world and our daily experiences. Each day offers a myriad of opportunities to learn something new about ourselves, about others, and about the universe we inhabit. How do you incorporate learning into your daily life? How does what you learn influence your spiritual practices, practice and perseverance in adversity? 
The path of transformation is often fraught with challenges and setbacks, like the demons who might have struggled immensely to let go of their pride and old ways, we too might find certain habits or traits difficult to change. The key here is perseverance. Spiritual growth is not a sprint, but a marathon, requiring ongoing effort and the resilience to keep going even when progress seems slow or invisible. Engaging in regular spiritual practices like meditation, prayer, or journaling can strengthen our inner resilience and provide the stability needed to weather the storms of life. Each practice acts as a reminder of our commitment to transformation and keeps us grounded in our spiritual objectives. What practices have you found most helpful in maintaining your course in times of adversity? As we reflect on these practical applications, it's clear that the path laid out by the divine response to the demons is not an easy one. It requires dedication, humility, and a willingness to continuously grow and adapt. Yet, the rewards of such a path are immeasurable, leading not only to personal transformation, but also to a deeper connection with the divine and with the world around us. As we prepare to move into the final part of our discussion, let's contemplate how these principles of forgiveness, transformation, and perseverance can be integrated even more deeply into our lives, looking at specific methods and practices that can aid us in this endeavor. Are you ready to take these insights further and explore how to sustainably maintain this transformative path? Let's continue. As we approach the final segment of our exploration into the profound narrative of divine forgiveness and transformation, we turn our focus towards sustaining and deepening the transformative path we have embarked upon. This involves integrating the spiritual lessons into the fabric of our daily lives, ensuring that our journey towards greater enlightenment and understanding is not just momentary, but a continuous evolving process. Integrating Daily Reflection One of the most effective ways to sustain any transformation is through the practice of daily reflection. This involves taking time each day to review our thoughts, actions, and feelings, assessing how well they align with the spiritual principles we aspire to embody. Reflection can help us remain conscious of our progress and highlight areas where we may be falling short providing an opportunity for continual adjustment and growth. Consider implementing a daily review at the end of each day. How did your actions today reflect the virtues of compassion, humility, or integrity? Were there moments when you could have acted differently? What lessons can you draw from today's experiences to better align with your spiritual goals tomorrow? Cultivating Resilience through meditation. Meditation is a cornerstone of spiritual practice that supports both the quest for forgiveness and the process of transformation. It cultivates mental and emotional resilience, allowing us to meet life's challenges with a calm and centered disposition. Through meditation, we can develop the ability to observe our thoughts and emotions without becoming attached to them, facilitating deeper inner change. Integrating meditation into your daily routine can significantly enhance your ability to maintain spiritual focus. Even short periods of meditation can be beneficial. Are you able to set aside time each day, perhaps in the morning or evening, to meditate and reconnect with your spiritual center? The power of service. Service to others is a powerful practice for embedding spiritual principles into our lives. It takes the focus away from our own needs and desires and places it on the well-being of others, fostering a sense of connection and unity. Service can take many forms, from volunteering in your local community to simple acts of kindness in your daily interactions. Think about ways you can engage in service. How can your unique talents and abilities be used to help others? 
Engaging in service not only aids those you help, but also deepens your own spiritual journey, reinforcing the virtues of compassion and humility. Embracing Continuous Learning Our spiritual journey is never complete. There is always more to learn and understand. Embracing a mindset of continuous learning keeps us open to new ideas, teachings, and experiences that can further enhance our understanding and practice. Consider setting regular goals for learning new spiritual concepts or practices. This might involve reading spiritual texts, attending workshops or lectures, or learning from spiritual mentors. How can you ensure that you are continuously exposed to new spiritual knowledge and experiences? Community engagement. As we've discussed, being part of a spiritual community can provide invaluable support. Community members can offer encouragement, share insights, and help us stay accountable to our spiritual goals. Engaging actively with a community can also provide opportunities for service and learning. Evaluate your current level of engagement with your spiritual community. Are there more active roles you could take on? Or perhaps there's a need to seek out a community if you haven't found one yet. How can this community support help sustain your spiritual transformation? As we conclude our deep dive into the narrative of the demons asking for forgiveness and the transformative lessons it offers, remember that the journey of spiritual transformation is ongoing. Each day presents new challenges and opportunities for growth. The key is to remain committed, keep reflecting, and continuously strive to align more closely with the spiritual principles that guide us. Let us take these lessons and integrate them into our lives, not just as temporary measures, but as lifelong commitments to living more spiritually aware and connected lives. By doing so, we ensure that our journey towards enlightenment continues to evolve, bringing us closer to our highest selves and the divine essence that permeates all of life.